better with every day. everyone back with another episode of stuff and things today I've got a pretty interesting video we're doing some things that you probably shouldn't do with an electric vehicle behind me over here and the shots that you just saw from last evening that is a brand new Ford f-150 lightning this is Diamondbacks vehicle and Andy from Diamondback is currently on a cross-country road trip with this new electric truck and we're kind of overlanding with it, camping with it, taking it off road, doing probably a lot of firsts with this electric F-150. So as you guys know, I'm pretty interested in electric vehicles, especially like electric rideables, bikes and skateboards and stuff like that. When it comes to electric vehicles, like this truck here, this one is very unique because you have all this technology packed into the best selling vehicle for the past like 30 years in America and it's like a weird use case. So we're going to be testing this thing out some more over the weekend here and I'm going to try to give you guys my opinions on it. But in reality, we are using this thing way outside of its normal use case. This thing isn't really made for off-roading. It's really not made for cross-country hauls, but that's what makes testing it outside of its wheelhouse kind of fun. So this testing began yesterday. We were planning on coming up here to one of our favorite trails and mountain lakes, a really nice camp spot. We were going to leave around noon, that way we could set up and make some food and stuff like that, but we ran into the first snag with the F-150 Lightning, and that is the range and finding chargers. I'll grab Andy's opinion on this a little bit later. We'll probably have to filter it a little bit, but charging infrastructure is really not quite good enough for driving this thing across the country and when you're coming out like way up into the mountains into some pretty remote areas the range is really going to limit you of where you can go and what you can do the plan this morning was to go off-roading a little bit more with this thing I already had the chance to drive it so I'll probably drive it a little bit later but we need to charge it it got down to about 27 degrees here last night and this dropped about 10% in battery just sitting here overnight so that's not great, obviously, especially if you're way up in the mountains away from a charger. I will say though, the trail that we came up and like the off-road capabilities, I mean, this truck was not really built for off-roading, but it is an F-150, it is a truck. So 
We aired this down, probably too low. I believe the tires were set to 15 PSI, which on a Tacoma, like my truck, is completely fine. But with a truck like this and all the batteries, this thing is heavy. I believe this is the long range version and the range with the wheel and bigger tire setup, I think it's like less than 200. So you have to plan your trips to find chargers within 200 miles. You have to plan having a pretty full charge to come up into the mountains and it's not ideal, but we're working with it. So now we're going to start to pack up camp. We're going to head down to the closest charger, which unfortunately is probably not a very fast charger. We're gonna to top this thing off as much as possible while just kind of killing time in town. And then we're gonna head up to the next camp spot where hopefully I'll be able to drive it and I'll give you guys a more in-depth look at how this thing handles off-road, the range, and everything that the F-150 Lightning is all about. All right, guys, we made it back to town. All of us are airing up and we've made it to the charger for the Lightning. Tell us, Andy, is it a good one? The charger? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty damn good. For it being in the middle of wherever we are, Middle of nowhere. Undisclosed location, 72 kilowatts. We've added 55 miles of range. That's not bad. Yeah. So Andy, this is Andy from Diamondback. You've seen him in my videos before, but he made it out of the mountains all the way back down here with 38. 38 miles of range. Began, well, got up there with 53. So the cold depleted. It depleted 10%, like I said in the beginning, but then as it warmed up a little bit, it actually went back up. back up. So that's like a, problem with all electronics but it's pretty interesting while we're in town here and while the lightning is charging up we're gonna have to air this thing up we're gonna grab some lunch and then we're going to head to a new camp spot and once we get there once this thing is all topped off I think I'm gonna drive it can I drive it yeah. you trust me yeah, you can take it for Ever, man. Does Diamondback trust me it. to keep it forever? Diamondback trusts you with our future growth. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I want to keep this thing you forever. You don't. don't. So Andy gave me the chance to drive this thing as soon as he got into Colorado, and we took it through a little field. We were just ripping on it, just like checking out how fast it is, and that's kind of what like draws me to a vehicle like this. And you saw how it kind of handled off-road, but I haven't driven it off-road yet. I plan on doing that here in a little bit. What are your opinions on it? It's way 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 smoother than a taco it's, it's, <laughs> okay uh, i can't say that no you can say that Cut. it is no you're right it is no i mean it's it's you've, you we were doing 75 miles down a washboard road and couldn't feel it i mean it, it's just rolling over it's so heavy sticks to the i mean it feels like you're on a track the energy usage too was almost non-existent you know you're regenning coming down i think on the way up we used two or three miles of range because you're going a lot slower, you're not like stomping yeah, on Yeah, yeah, and never at a loss of power. Like, it, you know, barely any energy usage, but also when I needed it, we always had power right away. So do you feel like if you could get a full charge here, you could go and spend like a few days up in the mountains up there? I mean, if you're not bouncing around locations, I feel like you could make it a week. It, okay. If the daytime temps are coming up again, I wouldn't go true winter camping. In right, it true. Because the that 20 degree temp really killed it. And I also am going to get his opinions on driving it from Diamondback in Pennsylvania all the way out to Colorado. He's on a big road trip right now, so he's continuing this journey. Going to Utah. Going to Utah next, going down to Southern California. He's got his wife and kid with, and he's got some opinions on that. So we'll uh, ask him about that once we get up to the campsite. <laughs> all right, guys, we have fueled up our bellies. We have charged the lightning. Can I have the keys, Andy? Can I have the keys, please? He's got two miles of range. <laughs> two miles. <laughs> Be back by midnight. Well, we've got probably like 10 until the campsite, so. That's right. All right, it's time for me to drive this thing off-road proper. You wanna hold the cam for me? Yeah, I got you, man. This whole video is really for like driving this thing off-road, overlanding and stuff, but this is the front. You can put drinks and ice and stuff in like a cooler under here. Four outlets, USB-C, regular USB. Is that the power for the outlet too? Okay. So you can turn them on. We don't want to kill the range though, like so. An indicator. an indicator. And then the back has a more powerful outlet. 220. So you could like run a welder off of it. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Don't run a welder off it, man. <laughs> Mike says you could do it forever, but I don't believe him. I don't know. Let's All do right. it. Don't take her easy. All right, should we just steal this thing now? Yeah, should we just let them go on the trail and then we just... <laughs> See you guys. All right, so interior of the new Lightning. I already like that they don't have like a knob or like a stock for the Teslas, so 
Power on. Seat moves forward. And it's running now, which is weird. I'm not even gonna get into like all of this stuff because I honestly haven't spent much time with it. Uh, we have 142 miles of range right now, and that should be plenty to go to where we're camping and then for these guys to get back to Denver. So, I mean, this is comfy compared to a Tacoma. Dude, these seats are nice. Danny drives a F-150 Tremor. So this is like right at home for you, huh? Oh, it feels great. All right, I guess I should buckle up. You might want yeah. to as well. <laughs> buckle up as well. All right, so gear shift, I like that. Isn't it like the Dodges that have the little dial? I think so. <laughs> it's so weird. Immediately silent, already. The, the suspension's so soft. It, yeah, already just backing up in this little like dirt parking lot. It's so soft compared to even my truck, which is heavily upgraded. Should we stomp on it just once? All right, I want to conserve some of the range, but I'm just gonna give it a little boop. Ready? The camera's probably gonna go flying. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> it doesn't hook up like immediately because obviously we're not even in four wheel drive yet, but we're on dirt, get a little bit of tire spin. And I mean, it's like a hoon mobile right now. It's starting to snow. Yeah, it's starting to snow up here which is not good for the range, but you can kind of see the roads in front of us here. Like, Let me see if I can get <laughs> it's gonna be bouncy. So big potholes, washboard, dirt road. This one at the point that we're at right now is fairly heavily trafficked. There's been a lot of cars in and out here all summer, but even today we've seen a lot of vehicles. So not the greatest road ever, but this is already obviously way quieter and even more comfortable than the Tacoma. I guess I should go a little bit slower because we did not air it down this time. So right here, it's getting a little, a little bit rockier. Still in two wheel. Honestly, I should have asked how to put it in four wheel. Is this the same as your Tremor? Do you know how it's to do It's similar, that? so you can change a drive mode. Okay. How do I put this in four wheel? Just go off road mode, hit the truck on the so upper drive mode. corner of the monitor. I got it, thank you. So now in off-road mode, got colors changing. I believe this automatically locks the rear differential, but I guess if we go in, can't adjust the features while we're actually moving, but you can lock the rear, you can unlock the rear in off-road mode. I'm assuming this would change something on the suspension, but again, I have no idea. This truck is brand new to me. I haven't really done any research on them. I just wanna see how it would be as like an overland vehicle. You guys already saw in the beginning, Andy taking it up the previous pass and I mean, it was pretty impressive. <laughs> We're going through deep, deep water crossings. Right here is just a little mud hole. It could be a little softer, but that's me just like being picky, I guess. Yeah. How do you think this feels compared to your Tremor off-road? The Tremor's way softer and it sucks this stuff up. Like okay. the ruts, the washboards. Yeah. The suspension is just tuned different, but for an EV, for an e that's, that's what it really comes down to. Like we're in an electric vehicle that's really not made to do this stuff and we're doing it because it's a truck. If you make any kind of truck, it should have some type of off-road capabilities. And this one does. It's not gonna be as good as the Tremor package, but it's doing all right. It's doing all right. So just looking at the suspension on this truck from the outside, it's a very weird setup and it doesn't seem like there's any kind of aftermarket support for suspension right now, specifically the rears. The rear setup suspension on the Lightning is very different from like a regular F-150. But then again, who's buying this? Who's buying the Lightning? Not people like me or Mike or like anyone who's with us. Can you use it for camping and overlanding and like light off-roading? Sure, but generally if you're like an outdoorsman and you wanna be outdoors quite a lot, you're not gonna want an EV. We're driving through like a little campground dispersed camping area and this thing is definitely turning heads, probably more than my Tacoma, which is following us because people haven't really seen these out in the wild yet, especially on a trail. So again, who's buying this? Not someone who's outdoors trying to wheel all the time and camping because of it being electric. I believe this is the long range version, is that correct? Yeah, this is the long range model. So we didn't take it all the way to 100% charge, but I believe when we left the last charging station, he may have had 200 miles, maybe not quite 200. So the range is gonna be super limiting on driving across the country, which we'll talk to Andy about. Going up into the mountains, if you're on a super long trail, this is not going to be ideal for really getting out super remote, but it'll do okay. I think 
the people who are buying a vehicle like this, generally probably pretty wealthy, because right now I believe these are like 80 grand if you can even get one. I'm sure people are selling them for quite a lot more than that. I think this Diamondback Lightning is a Lariat. Yeah, this is the Lariat package too. So, I mean, there's different packages. So I think people who are buying this generally live in a city. I, it kind of reminds me of like someone who's blue collar, like you want a truck, but you live in a more populated area, like suburban areas. I would not want to drive this thing in a city, that's for sure, but like on the outskirts of a city, say outside of Denver, you got a few charging stations all around and I think that's like the demographic. Someone who wants a truck, you're outdoors occasionally, you're not going on crazy overlanding adventures, you're not doing any kind of gnarly off-roading, but you want a truck and you like EVs. I think a bunch of years from now, once the infrastructure is better for charging, then a vehicle like this will make more sense. I think as of right now though, a regular electric car, like a Tesla, would make a little bit more sense for the average commuter. This thing's so quiet. Yeah, this thing is <laughs> so, just you know super what you're... <laughs> quiet. Like I hear the truck itself making noise, just like the gear underneath the Diamondback in the back, but I mean, even when you stomp on it, it's solid. Like you don't hear anything. And I apologize for anyone getting nauseous watching this, but <laughs> yeah. I'm doing my best to stabilize my I apologize, hand. you're probably getting nauseous filming this. <laughs> watching the screen. Ooh. Another thing that I wish it could do, which it may be able to do, but I wish there was a way to change the accelerator sensitivity, because if we're like really bumping over stuff like Ooh. this right here, if you're not used to driving off road, you might like slam the throttle by accident and you do not want to put this pedal to the floor because it's got a ton of power. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> Dude, look at this is not the way I intended to break the lightning, but this coffee is going everywhere. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> oh my gosh. Too late. All right, so now we're actually headed up the mountain. I think we're gonna end at around like 12,000 feet. Trail's getting a little more like off camber, kind of rutted in sections, but the Lightning's handling it just fine. Now, originally when I was going into my truck purchase, of course I have a Tacoma. I got it because the trails in Colorado are fairly tight and this trail right here is not too bad unless we have some oncoming traffic. So we should be able to make it up just fine. The Tacoma to me feels like a sports car. Like when you're sitting in it, you're kind of like lower to the floorboard. You're definitely more cramped than something like this. This feels like a proper truck. So that's the difference between like a full size and then my tiny little Tacoma. I did also drive the Ranger. Do you think they'll ever make an electric Ranger? I mean, eventually it may go there. That would be kind of tight. Oh, here's something. Oh, there Ooh. it is. Yeah. Here's something to talk about. This thing has cameras all over it, but you can't turn the front camera on to see what you're about to go over. So here's a little creek crossing that we're going through. Check that out over there. So actually right here, this is perfect. Andy wants me to back up so they can take some photos, but you got bird's eye view, you got the front camera or back camera right here. Is there a front camera? There is a front camera, yeah. So this thing does have cameras all over it, but when you're driving, I have not found a way to keep that front camera on full time, which I like to do when driving on trails like this in my Tacoma because visibility generally isn't the greatest. I mean, visibility in this is actually pretty good. It doesn't bother me. Maybe I'm just used to driving a truck now, but it would be nice to keep that on. And I'm sure there is a way to do this. There's a Ford Lightning owner out there, like one dude who's like, no, you can do all that. You don't know what you're talking about. But hey, this is just my first impression. I wasn't even planning on driving this thing.
guys we have made it to our campsite I absolutely love this whole location we're just way up here in the mountains got lakes all over the place my opinions of the lightning off-road there's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad just like a lot of electric vehicles I kind of told you all the bad about like the electronics and stuff which is probably some stuff that I could just figure out if I actually knew more about the truck but the good stuff because it's electric it has a ton of torque ton of power it's fast and it makes crawling with the truck actually pretty easy when you're coming up to obstacles where typically in like a Tacoma you're gonna need to give it a lot of gas you can just slowly ease onto it with the lightning and it just kind of like pops over stuff that being said though you don't have a ton of ground clearance it's really not made for like anything gnarly off-road but it feels good it was smooth and comfortable even though we didn't air down a whole lot. It is heavy, which is a con, but I don't know, I kind of dig it. Yeah, you can actually see him pretty well. Let me see. What you guys looking at? Wild sheep. Oh, out the goats. Oh. Down here. Those are mountain goats. I know you guys can't see them, but there's mountain goats way up here. It is seven o'clock at night now. Camp is all set up, which means it's time for dinner. We've already had like 12 pounds of crab legs, which were pretty damn good. And we have like six ribeyes as well. Just kings out here eating like kings. Oh yeah, know? dude. Yeah, kings doing king stuff, you know? Kings doing king shit. I haven't checked the weather for tonight, but it's already getting pretty cold. See our breath. Last night it probably got down to like 25, I think it was 27 when I woke up. So chances are it's gonna be just as cold here with all the snow-capped mountains around us. So while we still have the lightning here for testing, we're doing some like promo video photo stuff. Check this out. 220 outlets in the back here. Got an extension cord. Where does this thing go? Oh, the real fire isn't good enough for you guys? You gotta have your own personal fire pit? <laughs> So since we have a bunch of power tonight compared to how the truck was last night, we're kind of using auxiliary power, accessory power to do a bunch of dumb, fun things. It's gonna be cold in 30 seconds, so as soon as we do it, just, just grab them and eat them, all right? One bite, you know the rules. There you go. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my God. Is it good? It's so good. Oh yeah. Oh man. Jason, thank you for dinner. Yeah, man. We still have six steaks to cook, but maybe we'll do that later. <laughs> now for the final part of this lightning project, Andy has driven this thing from Pennsylvania. You went through Ohio, Indiana, Iowa. You charged Illinois, probably Nebraska. Illinois, Nebraska. Yep. The worst route. <laughs> the worst <laughs> route ever. So obviously most EVs are not great for like long distance travel. So give us like the raw and dirty of your actual opinion of using this thing for cross country travel. Yeah, sure. I mean, honestly, it's a shame that the charging stations aren't a little bit better figured out because it's a super comfortable truck. I had a kid in the back and he, he was quiet the whole time, took naps in it. Um, that is a huge pro. Like even yeah. coming up here on the trail, it's quiet on the, on the trails, <laughs> quiet on the road, highway, the, the, Tires don't make noise. I mean, it, or that you can't hear it from the cabin. So you know, it's, it's really a shame that it's not there yet. But you know, I'll, I'll be staying tuned. If three years from now there's some trend where EV stations are you know ramping up their their output and they're they're way more frequent, then I'd be all about it. I mean, it, it's an awesome truck, super fun to drive. Everyone looks at it if you're in that into that kind of thing, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's a Ford F-150. It's tough not to like an F-150 even for a Tacoma guy like me. So. You're right. And it has a Diamondback cover. It's got a Diamondback on it, man. So where can people find the rest of your journey? Because I know this is going up all over the internet. Yeah, but. sure. I mean, Diamondback covers, but also our partners. We're, we're trying to visit with all of them. So we'll be at Fieldcraft next in Utah. We'll be in California with a bunch of our, uh, our escape buddies and NorCal with Oliver Nye and Angler uh, up there. And yeah, Diamondback covers though. I mean, we'll, we'll be keeping people updated. We have a ton of content uh, from this trip, but also from past and, and we'll have more from the future. So huge thank you to Andy and oh, all the Diamondback thanks to guys. Talon, no, Danny, thanks to Talon, Danny, Jason, all Sam, Mike, we miss you. Robbie. Wes, we miss you more. <laughs> Robbie, our camera guy. Robbie. 
We've got so much cool content. You guys only saw like a fraction of it here in this video, but stay tuned on like everyone else's platform here because there's gonna be a lot of cool adventure stuff with the lightning, if you like the lightning. And all that stuff is going to be coming out soon. If you guys have any questions on the truck, you can let me know in the comments down below. I honestly don't know much about it, like I've been saying this whole video. But it was fun to drive. I got some experience off-road with the Lightning. And yeah, let me know what you guys got. I think that's going to be all for tonight because we're all going to probably cook some more food, maybe watch some movies, and go to bed. So if you guys are new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week. As always, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.